before I hand over to Jim. Uh, so thank you to everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, I don't know where in the world you might be, but if you're um, like me in County Down, it's a pretty miserable afternoon, so no better way to spend it than listening um, to the talk from Jim today. Uh, I'll just go through a couple of housekeeping things first before I properly introduce Jim. Um, myself and my colleague Gavin are here um, supporting in the background, looking after the waiting room and the chat and things like that. You're all on mute um, and that's just to minimize any background noise while Jim is speaking. Um, but if you do have a question for Jim, you can pop it into the chat box and we will ask him questions at the end. So anything you have along the way, just pop it in there and we'll get to it at the end. And apart from that, um, I'm going to be running Jim's slides, so you might hear him every so often just say next, and that's just an indication for me to move the slide on. Um, but apart from that, uh, we'll just be listening to Jim throughout the, um, the talk. So this is a presentation by Jim McBride, who is a railway historian and a committee member of the Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. It's centre, not committee. Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. Um, and he's just recently authored a book on the subject as well. Um, so we're really interested and delighted that uh, Jim is here to talk to all of us today. So I'm going to hand over to Jim now and just sit in the background and, and listen and go through the slides. So we're very glad to have you, Jim, and I will hand over to you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, we'll get started. We'll learn about the story of the London Oxway Railway Company, the last independent Argus Railway in Ireland. And it exists in 1863 and 2014. And we'll tell you about this fantastic railway company and its many unique claims to fame. Next. So we're going to start our story in the city of Derry or London, Derry, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to take a journey down the line from Derry to Bancrana, first of all, and that opened in 1863 and closed in 1950, uh, closed in 1953. And we're going to learn about it, first of all, and the London Air Locksway Company was one of the four railway companies that served the city, the historic city of Derry, London Derry. And it was the longest, it was the last independent railway company to serve the city because the Locksway had nearly 100 miles of railway track, which just four miles were inside Northern Ireland after a partition in 1921, which meant it couldn't become nationalised by the North or the sovereign governments. Next. It's, it's a, the Lux Valley has own terminal station on Strand Road, there called Graving Dock, up to nearby Gra Graving Dock, that served at the, 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 the Albany Port in the city. Okay? Today, if you stood there today, the factory to your right is still there, it's Long's factory in the Strand Road, as now houses and a supermarket, but where the train is, it's now part of a four track dual carriageway. And all the houses a special party of 1952. And one of the special trains this time, the English enthusiasts were well aware the line had, you know, months left to live, and they came across a sample of the unique charms of Loxwilly, the second largest Nargate system in County Donegal after the County Donegal Railway itself. Next. I'm going to take a journey to the line, and now, the Swilly never liked wasting money, and their station was described not just the worst in the city, probably one of the worst in Ireland. And the American tourists heard the remark that he thought it was a cattle shed, but this, but this really was to say, but I did use the station as a cattle shed too. So, to say at least, the competition here was a bit spartan. Next. Now, we're going to take a look at what so they had some fantastic locomotives. Okay. I've seen number 15 here, built 1899. Behind it, you can see the wagons. This one had a connection here to the London Derry Port and Harbour Commission's Railway, which is six miles of dual track line around the quays of Derry. And that was a dual track line because it was three foot gauge and lines at the Great Northern End to see were five foot three. And we see number 15 here is shutting this train ready, you know, one well, of the goods trains out towards Letterkenny, which was its usual run. Next. Now, this one was famous, of course, because of, you know, it had a lot of extensive, even to the very end, had very heavy cross border goods traffic. This was from June 1948, so it was a very, very busy scene. If you know Derry at all, to the right of the train is what you now know it as um, CSB Supermarket and the Strand Road. The houses to the left are still there, actually. If you ever, if you it just depends on where you know Derry. And um, this thing would, would suggest that the line was very, very busy. And the Swilly was an independent transport company, over um, buses, trains, and even. Boats as well. Next. Now, as I said before, this, the, the main station in Derry was just inside the border, 
And we had our shoe here was as soon as the train being shunted. There's a perimeter wall. Now, to say that wall, the left hand side strand road Derry, which is still there. In those days, it was two lanes. The right hand side, that's now an, another part of the dual, the dual carriage, right? Not part of the world. Next, please. Now, Swilly was formed, this was formed back in 1863. Several of the conditions inside the station were, were pretty basic. Photographs of the interior are very, very rare, but you can see from this very rare photograph, the conditions were, were you know, said it's very, very basic. Next. Now, Swilly is famous for its locomotives. Now, towards the end of the Cary Donegal Railway, he didn't really keep the locomotives in very good shape. Ironically, the Swilly did. did. Okay, it's a very different, you know, railway company in Donegal. As early as 1931, the Swilly decided to, to replace their trains with their own buses to save money. But well, Donegal used rail cars to keep the railway open. So they left, you had number 13, one of the large 462 tanks, built specifically for the famous line to, 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 to Burtonport. And to number, and, uh, as to the left, and to, to the right is number 10. Number 10 was one of the smaller 462 tanks. It was often used in the Pennyburn line, on the line from Pennyburn towards Buncrana. Number 10 was always based on the Buncrana line towards the end. There's a small local shed at Fawn. The drivers used to keep the engine in the shed at night at Fawn. As the, you know, and why I said they looked after that little engine better than they, than they were looked after. Next. Now, the Swilly never wasted much money on anything. It's one of the typical Swilly coaches from about 1901. And um, Spartan interiors, there was no upholstery, there was no heating, there was no um, lighting. So you basically, you, you travel in these very primitive conditions. And we all know how cold the winters can be here. And there was no heating, so you had to wrap up well and just, and just get on with it. At this stage, the coach is really used for excursion trains, mainly from Derry to Banana and back during the summer months, or, or what we call sort of summer months here. Next. Now, as I said before, you know, we're looking, this is what they had their headquarters at Pennyburn and they crossed the Strand Road. And I, quite often, I've you know, lived and worked in Derry. I told people about the railway cross the Strand Road, they just couldn't believe me because today you get knocked over trying to cross the Strand Road. What you hear is the train cut leaving has just left gravy dock to in your background. It's crossed the road towards Pennyburn, but so they had their workshops. And you know, it's a, and it's full of young people from Derry going for a day out in Bunkrana, which is the Derry version of Port Rush. Next. Now, as I said before, at Pennyburn, the logo was a Swilly had their workshops. The Swilly also operated a line that was 75 miles long from Derry to Burtonport. So to operate the line to, to you know, Burtonport, the Swilly had these large steam engines built. No other railway in Ireland had four eight O's. Okay? For the long line, they, they, they had the tender at the back. And this, this is three foot gauge. These are the largest steam locals in Ireland at the time they were built, and the only narrow gauge tender engines built at any railway in Ireland. And that's what made the Swilly so special. And number 12 is the last survivor of two of these engines built as far back as 1903. Next. Now, later on, they had you know these tank engines built, you know, mainly from Bunkrana, the, the line to Bunkrana, but they're also used in the Burton Port line. These were 484 tanks. Most of you had never seen any other railway in Ireland. They're the largest tank into any narrow gauge railway in Ireland. And it's a great pity one was not preserved. And you see how large they are, the size of the fireman oiling the motion on the, beside the engine, just how big these engines must have been. They're supposed to weigh about 50 tons when they're weighed. As for an older and the Donegal, they're found away nearly 60 tons. But these things here haul trains up to 17 coaches long on excursions to Pru Bunkrana. Next. Now, what we have here is one of the earliest narrow gauge engines that built to the Swilly. The Swilly was originally was a broad gauge railway, that was five foot three, and it's converted between 1883 and 1885 to be a three foot gauge railway, just like County Donegal was as well. And one well, of the earliest locals built the lines, an narrow gauge line to Bunkrana, was one of these old six old tanks. And this is the last survivor. Now, this was in 1932. You just see where its nameplate's been read. It looks like it's got a few dents as well. It's had a few accidents. And it survives in service to 1940, allegedly. But photographs show it's out of just long before 1940. But then it's really never like to waste money. Next. 
Now, with eight penny Burma had their headquarters and their engine shed, and was going across the border. The bridge end station was in after partition was inside what, we, what the Irish Free State or the Irish Republic, and just four hundred yards inside the Irish Republic. But because of that, they had the inevitable customs checks. Some we're getting familiar with again today. And during the customs checks, you know, the engine would get watered, the customs men do their job. And the, the Irish postman, because we're in Donegal now, is waiting to collect his meal from Derry. That's where he arrived to the boats in the Derry over the night. Because of those days, boats still travel daily from, particularly from Glasgow towards Derry on a daily basis. And then the engine men is just waiting. The crew just waiting for the customs check to be carried out and things to proceed. But these customs check delay passenger services in particular, and the whole goods trains up between, between 30 minutes and an hour at least on occasions. And this is only just travelled four miles of Derry, but already we're in a different country. Next. Now, the Swinney, they were like the waste money, they only had one brick built signal cabin on the whole system. That was a two band junction with two lines to quarantine from Crana and Burtonport, Burt, Little Kenny for Burtonport. And we see, it also had an island platform. Now, what made Tuban Junction special was there was no road access to Tuban Junction. So you had a big long platform for exchange purposes, and yet there's no, there no locality in the area. The nice little village has grown up around the area and surrounded two waters. And, you had, and the crew had to wait across the little stream to get access to the station. And yet this had the, the, the best signal cut on the line for reasons that nobody can really know why. Next. We're going to look now, the soil also, you know, Swinney never liked to waste money. So they didn't have, uh, most railway companies had good gardens fans in the back of their train, but not the Swinney. What they did is they used one of the brake coaches in the back of their train. Swinney really stopped running official pasture services as early as 1940, okay? But when pasture services were restored because of the effects of World War II during the, during the early 1940s, okay? You can still travel any swilly, swilly goods train because every swilly goods train has one of these pasture brake fans on the goods fans, pasture goes to the back of the train. The swilly being the swilly would charge you a fare to travel on these things. And it's actually about half a six pence cheaper to get the train to Bunkrana using it was put on the swilly bus, but then the, the, the train would take about an hour and a half longer. But the railway enthusiasts didn't mind. They also never used tail lamps, so you see a small you know, metal disc on the back of the train to indicate the end of the train. And this photographs at break at, at break bridge end. And the guy taking the photograph is taking the advantage of the break to get the photograph. Yeah, they're a little unique feature. Next. Now we're going to move down back to Tubin Junction. Okay. Tubin Junction was, was a place that you know was a sleepy backwater. There's no road at road access. So where a few times a day came to life, the trains crossed at the Tubin Junction. Trains crossed, the, the goods train from Derry County to Derry crossed with the goods train from Derry to Bunkrana. You know, parcels were exchanged, par, you know, all sorts of things happened. And the signal cam would get, the, you know, get busy again as the crews went for a cup of tea and the chat. And you see the long single plum here very clearly. To the left, you see a lot of old track materials. This was in 19, June 1952. And this is the, the, the trap trail of the recently lifted Burton Port Extension, which had been lifted from between Gwador and Letterkenny in 1949-1950. And it was dumped at Tubin because the swelly route was very safe there because there's no road, road access to it. So there's no way of getting nice stuff could be stolen. And indeed, up to the 1930s, this is what was the border customs post for goods trains on the Lock Swelly. For the same reasons, there was no road access. So it's also a safe place to exchange you know, goods, traffic, and store them as they underwent customs procedures. Next. Now, saying earlier, the Swilly you know, was unique. And um, for us, some of these stations, the intermediates are very hard to get because really they had no past, you know, very little pasture traffic. And they're just hard to get to. And one of the ones that's um, it's, it's in Shrode here, uh, in Shrode's where you would change to, go, to walk across the causeway to Inch Island. Um, it's not that's not a good passing look you see to the right. It's a good sighting and the good store. Remarkably, the house is still there, but it's very hard to identify these days as it's been much modified. Next. Now we're going to head it towards Moncrana. 
and that's where some fun station. Now, I really recommend if you're interested, when I pay a visit to the farm, the station building to the left is still there. That wall is still there. You can see quite clearly where the platform was. There's a bridge behind us when they were carrying the road over the railway. And today, Vaughan Station is a very popular restaurant where the owners have done a superb job in capturing the railway atmosphere of the Swally. And there's a lot of you know, photographs, memorabilia to be found there. And, you know, it's amazing how little that scene has saved and fair play to the owners of that place because they've done a very sympathetic restoration job. And they, one of the book losses we had was in Fawn Station. And it was just really nice to do that the other evening. Next. Now we're heading out towards Munkrana. Okay. And we can see here we're, we're pushing Munkrana and what's called Beach Halt. You can see just in front of the engine, the very basic facilities here. And this has been, you know, somewhere for the train was stopped, it's way to Munkrana. And we then let the mums and dads and the kids get easier access to the lights of the beach on a nice summer's day in Munkrana. March 53, they really had about six months to live, less than six months left to live. Ian Parson wrote the very famous history in Luxwilly Railway Company, the, the definitive history. And he is responsible for many who have an interest in Argus railways of Ireland and particularly County Donegal. Next. Now, this is one of the earliest photographs I've ever seen, and I'm quite glad to include it in the book. I said for um, the line the rail, really opened to Bunkrana in early 19, 1864 as a five foot three railway, and it was converted in 1885 to, to the three foot gauge because it was cheaper, more economical, and there was a possibility of extension, which did happen. Uh, this for us dates back to the 1890s. Uh, Chosen one of the very earliest inches, number two London Derry on the train for, 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 for Derry, Derry itself. Um, you see, it's just a very basic side, and look to the left. And you see quite clearly, it's just a three, five foot three gauge railway. Once you pay attention to the back of the train, you see a station building up on Crana. Remarkably, that station building is still there to this day as well. And it's now a very popular public house and restaurant. And if you're going around the back, you see very clearly the traces of the former railway. So this progress of the back in the 1890s. We know that because the lines extended into Condona in 1901, and the station was and a new platform and building was built. So that's how we know it must date back to the last decade of Queen Victoria. Next. Now, I did ask you to pay attention because here's the same. I, I put this in deliberately into the book. The photographs put at the same vantage point as the previous one, but 50 odd years later, you see a station building right in the middle. As it was in the previous one, but you see on the left hand side, you've got another station building, okay? And you know, a platform that was the Condona platform, even though the line the Condona shut closed as night early 1935, but still always known as the Condona platform. And to the right is the station building and the good shed, and the signals about the same location as the previous one, so it gives you an idea. Next, please, Lindsay. Now, the crown was, was also the place of you know. There's a terminal station from 1935, the line to Condona closed. So what the story does, what there was, you see a train for Derry from 1948 in the platform. Um, it's really, it's, it's, this is what Translink really need, proper bus rail interchange. The Swally bus is on the platform. I checked the large photograph, the bus came from Condona. So the, the, the Swally replaced their own rail services with their own bus services. I see a bridge behind connect the platforms. And remarkably, parts of this you know, station building and location are still identical to this day. Next, please. <coughs> now, we're now looking towards Derry. The line to the foreground is curving around because across the main road here, when I went out towards Condona, <coughs> so you see the north angle of the station footbridge from a different angle on the water tower. And some of the other buildings here, like the water tower, are still here in McCrana to this day. Um, I always speak at what the guy's doing on the left hand side. Maybe he's he hearing the windows or he's fixing the roof. <coughs> Next, please. Now, so, we're, but, so we've been to McCrana back. <coughs> There's very few good photographs of the line I could use from McCrana to Condona, so I did put one in the book, mainly because the line closed that early. After World War II, it was easier for the English and 
these has to come across in the court this way. After 1948, it was the last independent narrow gauge railway company left in Ireland, one of the last narrow gauge, one of the last independent companies left in Ireland. The Donegal was jointly owned, so it was a different proposition. And the Swinney can be arise on boat services, bus services, and train services. And what I have here uh, is, is the famous golf course to say from Crana. We see number two on the small 460 tanks, bring the excursion train back to Derry, and hopefully they've had a, 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 a dry day and a few kids looking at the window, etc. Today, you know, the road to the right is still there, but you know, you still see a lot of the scene to this day, and there's current talk apart making the line here in their green way. And I hope that does because it's a good way of be, being people remember about our, our great railway heritage in Ireland. Next. Now, having done the line to put to, to um, Bukrana and back, okay, you see on the map that shows the line from Bukrana to Cardona. Remarkably, most of the stations, buildings between Bukrana and Cardona are still intact today, and many are still in very good, good condition. It shows you how well they were constructed. In fact, if you ever have power, go to Cardona. The station building is still pretty much basically intact and in good condition. But, and, which is not bad because the line shut in 1935 and you still see a lot of those buildings there today and the current owners have done a great job in restoring them and maintaining them and fair play to them. So we're going to head back to Tuvan Junction. We're going to do out to Dunk to Bunk. See the famous line to Burtonport. Derry to Burtonport was 75 miles. So it was the longest continuous journey you do in any Irish narrow gauge railway. And it was the line from Lerica to Burtonport was 50 miles long and ran through what was called the Donegal Highlands. And the old story was whenever the Swanee seen a settlement, they, they didn't go anywhere near it. And sometimes like the Banagy Road was six miles away from the place it actually served. So that's part of the character of the Swanee. Next, please. Now, Tuvan Junction, as I said before, is one of, those, one of those unique places. What we have is a good photograph from 1952. And we're looking towards Moncrana. The line is curving way towards Moncrana on the right-hand side. Okay. And then to, on the left, the line's curving away towards Letterkenny. The line, the extension from Tuvan Junction to Letterkenny was opened in 1883 as a three foot gauge railway. And for a number of years, this is where you know, the trains changed gauge. We had three foot gauge trains on one platform, on the left hand side, and the right hand side, we had trains on the five foot three gauge. And there's very few Irish stations that happened in. Next, please. Now, this way, a number of intermediate stations between Tuman Junction and Letterkenny. Some of them, a few photographs, because after 1940, they only were served by goods trains, because it's sort of true that other passengers from Derry to, to Burtonport in June 1940. And after that, you had a very occasional passenger service on the Letterkenny line, either on special fair days or on the back of goods trains on a, on a daily basis, except, except on Sunday. Okay. And um, we we'll see here the train has been shut in, in, the in the yard here. The station building here still exists to this day, as do most of the Sully stations, remarkably. Next, please, Lindsay. Now, one of the most famous places where the trains crossed was Newton Cunningham, okay? Newton Cunningham's where the, the two goods trains crossed on a daily basis. The goods train from Derry to Letterkenny, and the goods train from Letterkenny towards Derry. And the two trains crossed here. They took water here. You see the water tank in the foreground, water column in the foreground. This station is in remarkably good condition to this day. And recently we've published a Donegal Railway Heritage Map, which you, you can order from our centre. And if you just pay the cost of the postage, we will send you on to the Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. And everyone's come to, to Donegal and do a walking tour or you know, drive around the car, whatever, please do so. Okay. Uh, I always do my partition, arms partition three ways, north, south, and Donegal. Next. Now, the trains cross the Union Colonial. Station building to the right is a private house to this day, and please respect that. And, you know, the trains crossed here, and this gives the guys a chance to get a few photographs, and this is number 15. Number 15, unfortunately, was not preserved as a great pity. It was the very first of the 462 tanks, built in 1899. Next, please. This is what I was renowned for its character, and I think, I think this photograph sums it up. The two trains are crossing, the station building the, there. Now, the platform stands a small signal cab, okay? It's a more typical signal cab than this because it was small and economical. You see a train taking water. 
You can still visit the Sigma Club to this day, but you have to come visit the Donegal Rabbi Heritage Centre where we had preserved the Sigma Club. And what we've done, we've been in our disabled toilet as well. So you, 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 know, you visit it in more ways. One, and it's one of the last surviving, you know, it's the last surviving London and Luxbury to come anywhere to be found. Unfortunately, only what, um, one coach in the Luxbury has been preserved and one wagon. And it's inside what is still closed. It's still close to Poyle Valley Rib Museum in Derry. Next, please. All right, we're in the letter Kenny. Today, what was this fully? Station there, Kenny, is now a shopping centre and car park. Okay. The, the Luxbury engines on the turntable, taking what um, get, and you see a very basic engine shed here. Now, in the background, in the background, you just see a bit of steam. Okay. You just see a bit of steam. Right, for your business. patience and sticking with this, okay, it's Thank great. You. Right, okay. <laughs> got Thank to you back. Guys, I'll try and um, find the the presentation where we were. We got, uh, yeah, I know exactly where Letter Kenny. Is that right? Yes. Uh, okay, that's it now. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So now, right. I have no idea what happened there. Someone shut me down. I had to unblock it. I had to shut the computer in twice. Letter Kenny, right? That's where it's there. Um, to the right, you see another steam engine in the background. That's actually a current Johnny Gall system. The two narrow gauge lines here share a connection, and their stations were beside each other. So thank you guys for your patience. Next, please, Lindsay. Now, today in Letterkenny, there is a swally station. Um, to the background was the level cross, with the line continuing across. You just see the level cross in the distance. That's the main road in Letterkenny. Today, you get knocked down as a major road, major traffic congestion, and the entrance to the shopping centre as well is there. Nothing remains, actually, this fully station building in Letterkenny, but the Donegal station survives next door as a town station. Next, please. Now, the Swally had a very substantial station here. They like, the Swally never like wasting money. On the right hand side, you see some of your former cash bodies being used as offices on the platform. And to the right, you can just see the Swally, the Block County Donegal Good Shed to the extreme right, which is still there to this day in much modified condition. Next, please. We're looking towards the town centre. I was around in Inner County recently for a book launch and tried to locate this location. And the only way we locate where we were, standing above a car park, was the spa of the church in the town centre. And you see a more traditional Swally signal cam with a unique slanting roof in, in the foreground on the right hand side. On the right, you can see the engine shed. This is 1948. In this stage, the goods traffic here was substantial, as you can see. And it took a number of years to really have enough lorries to convert all their road, all their freight traffic on the roads, not rails, from Letter Kenny in particular. And so the real traffic from Letter Kenny then switched to the Nile Railway, which survived another six years. My next please. What we have here is the turn one of the famous Swally 462 tanks. The carries on the Railway really had eight 264 tanks. So Swally had to be different, okay, and everything was possible. So they had eight 462 tanks instead. Well, Donegal has four 462 tanks to rise this day. Unfortunately, no Swally steam engines to rise day, which is a great pity to say the least. Next, please. And the road kept remarkably clean. Here's one of the famous 484 tanks that Swally had, the Letter Kenny. And these things I don't think were ever truly tested. Um, there are a number of plates still survive. One recently went for auction. Unfortunately, the price got too high for me. But the number here, number six, can be seen in the Malahide, the Frying Muller Ray Museum, along with some, some other Swally memorabilia outside Dublin. And it's well worth a visit if you're in Dublin. And it's a nice place to visit. And it's a very handy decision. Next, please. Now, we're going to head down the line, Old Car of Adders. Recently, um, the Vadox is, um, is, is it's very famous because in December, January 1925, the strong winds to the valley were so strong, it put a train onto, onto the valley floor below, killing four of the passengers. And after that, they had, had the way the swelly carriages with ballast, with large stones, they stopped them getting blown off again, installed an anemometer so the train couldn't cross during extreme winds. 
And there's been a recent memorial unveiled nearby to the own Caravada tragedy, the local community, and it's a lovely little viewing area and platform there. And it's well worth a visit if you're not part of the world. And North Donegal is often forgotten about, and it's well worth a visit. And I was there a few months ago, you know, chanting the old lady, and it was a beautiful scene, a beautiful day. And for once it wasn't raining. Next, please. Now, the guy who took these photographs, I came across them, thanks to Ernie's really archive. He came across an RAF man in April 1940 with World War II. He found out that Burdenport Line has six weeks left to live. And um, I was very lucky to use some of these very rare photographs. A crawley, you know, Evans still in station, the train, the train had been there once. He had a small mixed train and a siding there out towards the, the ballast pit here. And these mixed trains were now because there's mainly one coach and there were goods fans. But then they did take, take six hours on average to get from Derry to Burdenport by rail. But the bus took about four hours. So there you are, work it out. Next, please. Now, one of the things is what I see these four O type, four O engines, okay? These large tender engines. And the, the, you see the, the farmers out on the oil in the locomotive. Now, it took a while for me to work out on the extreme left. So I chant a good friend, Joe Begley, who's a C's in the, in the meeting. The Swally also owned, the Swaller, the McFarland family owned the Swally Ruby Company, also owned the horse tramway in Derry. And there's two of the horse tramway bodies on the platform here at Quays Lock. Today, Quays Lock, very little evidence even remains where the railway had been because the site is a bit much modified, which is unusual for a former swally station because the lot still survive in very good condition. And you see one of the famous mountains in the Highlands in the distance, a part of the world as well worth visiting. Next, please. We have right now reached Burdenport. And Burton Park, if you ever, have, ever visit in the community centre, is a model of Burton Board Station. I'm always saying it's one of these four roads as shunting the train up for departure of Derry. The Atlantic's in the distance, and one of the large bogey vans. And that's what he had three in them. So the fish traffic is behind the locomotive. And it's now a Burton Port to Falcara, it's now a railway walk. And once again, it's well worth a visit on foot, on site, on the bike. Sometimes during what we call summer in Northern Ireland. Next, please. And what we have here is the train Shunton and Burtonport Station. Number 14 is one of the large 462 tanks. And as of this week, I confirm that our next badge from the Zonigo River Centre will be of number 14, one of the 462 tanks. And that will be available soon from the Heritage Centre. And just check our website for details. So, a few coaches in the yard. Well, the traffic's never that heavy and they were either really as required. And you still see to this day very clearly where the baby was in Burtonport, even though it closed as far back as June 1940. Next, please. And to see a there really was one turntable between, between Leonard Kenny and Burtonport. And here we see the turntable at Burtonport. And number 14 has been turned on for the turn trip to Derry. And you see the rocky surroundings, which still characterise where the location of the station was in Burtonport in this part of the world. Next, please. Now, I'm going to look at some of the very, because it's really close very early, there's very few colour photographs. I've only ever seen about a dozen colour photographs of Loch Swally. The, the County of Nottingham really lasted in 1959, and we we're lucky to have plenty of colour photographs of it. Of it. The Swally went so early that those stations after World War II. You know, things were very expensive, travel was difficult, and this is at Vaughan Station looking towards Derry. And, you know, this scene has not changed that much at all, and it's quite remarkable. And number 10 is an excursion train to Macrana at Fawn. And Fawn's where you change the boat, the Swally boat services, to Rathmullen, etc., across Loch Swally. So it's also Vaughan Station, which is the very first station in Ireland to be powered by electricity. Very enterprising station master called James Bond, but not that James Bond, but the original one. Built his own electricity generator and supply the station with electricity in the 1880s. So Bond's the first British station in Ireland, and probably the British Isles, to be powered by electricity. One of the things that makes this fully so special. Next, please. And what we have here is a train entering from the road bridge. 
You can still drive over or walk over this road, this uh, road bridge towards Fawn Pier. And you see exactly where the railway was. And this, the current plans are this part of the line will be converted to Greenway. That's part of the Donegal County Council's initiative. And we're very lucky that Donegal County Council realised the importance of the railway heritage of the county and support the museum and our work in County Donegal. And we're there beside the railway heritage of County Donegal and Derry as well. Next, please, Lindsay. Now, what we here is a photograph. This is a great photograph. I love this photograph of 1948, June 1950. Looking towards Derry, you see how spacious the station was? Okay, look how busy the, the parcel, you know, packing cases on the platform, lots of the goods vans in the yard, and yet this line would close in three years, okay? And the engine's just, you know, getting cleaned up, probably got turned and watered. And, if it, you know, you hardly believe the station was 13 miles in Derry, and like you were in, like as we were in a different world, a time gone by indeed. Next, please. And um, what we have here is an excursion train, and this has been hired by a group of English enthusiasts in June 1952. And because the excursion train is to put three coaches together, and that's it, the enthusiasts realized that the, the last independent Argus railway in Ireland. You know, haven't got much time to run the railway. Now, mind you, it shuts the railway in 1953, but still a rate of buses till, till April 2014. I remember as a teacher giving a bus pass to Kate Barkin, London Dairy Luxwell Railway Company. They haven't changed their legal name. They're still an independent transport company, and they're one of the oldest transport companies in the world when they eventually closed in April 2014. Next, please, Lindsay. Now, you know, where the Swilly always kept their engines neat and tidy. This is the bridge end. Some of the buildings is for us still survives this dead bridge end, if you know where to look. And, and it's what's best for us a short train, one good span and a brake coach. Okay, was probably just doing a bit of shunting. And what the happened was the passengers could have half an hour to kill here and go to the nearby pub, which is on the station platform, to kill the time. Sounds like a good idea. Next, please, Lindsay. Now, this was at Pennyburn, the headquarters of Swilly, June 1953. The locomotive is absolutely immaculate, okay? You know, the crews really looked after their engines. So this was the last ever Swilly steam engine to be overhauled in 1951. And it's a great place, the new Belfast Transport Museum was still just an embryo stage. Because it'd been great to have one of these fantastic Swilly ones being preserved. I mean, fantastic to go to the trough and see this relic of a great forgotten railway. Okay, and you said word, just look how neat and tidy that engine is. Okay, it's kind of like all didn't seem to waste much time keeping their engines clean. Swilly crews did the opposite. Next, please, Lindsay. So when the Swilly closed the railway down, obviously they lifted the, you know, the track up. This is Letter Kenny. The only difference is there's no track. And there's a Swilly Road freight lorry in the platform. Okay. And those carriage bodies are still there. And the background to the right is the former Donegal, it's the Donegal station, that, which that stage was still open until 1959. If you're ever in Letterkenny, go to the Donegal bus station and you can sort of try and work out whether it really was in Letterkenny. Otherwise, it would be difficult. Next, please. <coughs> Now we're looking towards the town centre, okay? And what you have here is this this, this fully platforms, station building to the right, and the former good sheds to the left. That time there's still a connection to the good sheds and the Donegal line, and that was used right until the Donegal closed in December 1959. Yet again, it's hard to it's not hard to work out the railway was because all this way did was lift the track, nothing else. Next, please. Or the last few photographs, guys. I love this photograph. This is from my good friend John Bowman, which his father took in 1947. It said the railways carried no traffic, they weren't busy. Well, this, is, this is 1947. Six years for the Swilly closed, 12 years before the Donegal closed. Okay. And this is in the Donegal station, which was next door to the Swilly one. And that's the only thing that still survives to this day. And, and, oh, sorry, and the the Donegal Goods Shed on the right-hand side still survives as well. 
I like to thank you, Lindsay. I like to thank you all for your patience. Okay. You know, when I was in lockdown, you know, some people did different things. Um, next, please. Some people did different things. I started writing books and articles, started putting together collections of photographs to keep myself sane. Because during lockdown, lockdown was, you know, there were people do different things. And what I did was, first of all, I got the swelling photographs put together. I was asked to do a talk and they said, well, can you do a book? And I did a book and that was published last year on the lock swelling. They memorized a, a forgotten really 100 miles long, a certain it was four miles in the north and six, nine, six miles in the Republic. And um, when they started with the swelling bit together, then there's only golf photographs that came together. So the next request came next, guys. Jim, when are you going to do a book in the Donegal Railway? Now, all these books are published by the Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. Our new Donegal book is, is, can be pre ordered and due out in a few weeks' time. And we publish the book ourselves. So we say generally, if you buy our book, you support Railway Heritage and Preservation in Donegal. No one makes any money out of this except a small charity. And please visit the Donegal Railway Heritage Centre if you get a chance, if you're in Donegal Town. And we and we would be glad to see you. Thanks for your patience and time for questions. Thank you.